We talk Clemson football with Mark Gordon from Shaking the Southland. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel for the very best in college football coverage. If you don't believe me, check out the videos because we cover uh, the, all the important games in the teams coast to coast as much as possible. Mark, I got to ask you this question because we've talked Clemson football beyond just the nuts and bolts on the field, but just kind of the vibe around the program, the feel. And for you as a fan, this has been building for quite some time. You know, you went through the seven and fives and the eight and fours over and over and over and over. And then they got really good. They got really fast in offense. They had Taj Boyd, but had the bad defense still, despite the athletes on that side of the ball. And we saw the West Virginia game in the Orange Bowl. Then you broke through with the LSU win. You beat Ohio State. Okay, suddenly this is like a top 10 program. And then obviously the championship games, and then you get there, you lose. But man, it was great to get there. And then the next year, you 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 take the next step. It's almost been in order, uh, the the progression year to year as a as a program. Now you've reached the mountaintop. You got the flag. Was it different watching Clemson football this year? And is the playoff situation going to just feel different for you? To be, do you believe? It's certainly it's certainly been a bit of a different feel this year. You know, we're obviously we're getting used to it. Hey, you give that to me any time of the week when I get used to being a a fan of a college football playoff team. Uh, there has been a bit of a there's been a chip on the shoulder in the beginning of the year. Uh, a lot of people in the national media have come out and said, "Hey, this is going to be a rebuild year for Clemson." And look, you can't fault them for making that assumption. You're losing the Sean Watson. You're losing Mike Williams. You're losing Wayne Gallman. Nobody knows about Kelly Bryant. No one knows about Travis Etienne. You know, nobody knows how the wide receivers are going to step up. And it's a true testament to the recruiting ability of not only Coach Dabo Sweeney, but Brent Venables, but of Coach Scott, of Coach Elliott. They've done a tremendous job prepping these second teamers and saying, hey, your time is next year. You know, you're, you're going to get on the field. We're going to prepare you for that. And Clemson fans have had the confidence in their coaching staff. That's why I think all three of Clemson's coordinators were candidates for head coaching jobs over the last couple of weeks. You know, luckily we've been able to retain all three of them, but that's, that's the culture that they've built in Clemson. Now it's certainly been a lot harder on my stomach. Uh, I, I know during a lot of the, the tight games, I always, you know, I looked at my father, my father's the only one brave enough to watch these games with me. And then, We'll always look at each other and say, "Man, wasn't this so much easier when we were six and six? Uh, you know, when I when I was in school down at Clemson, you know, we we finally clinched the ACC Atlantic for the first time against Virginia, and that was that was a shock to me. You know, now we're in a position where we clinched the ACC Atlantic, and it's it's another check on the another check on the board there. You know, win win the division, win the con conference, win the state playoff time, and we're at the point in Clemson football where those become standard and you know you got to be careful with that a little bit because you have to appreciate the the time in Clemson football and what's happening here you know this doesn't happen with many college but some some teams don't ever get the chance to do this what we're going now so you have to sit back relax and enjoy it that's funny that I say relax because I never relax when it comes to Clemson football <laughs> but it's truly a special time and you know what? If you're a Clemson fan out there watching this, kick your feet up, reflect a little bit on what the last couple of years have been like, and truly appreciate the special young men that we have on the field right now. Mark, you delivered the information and the insight in such a poised fashion. I just can't imagine you just bouncing off the walls. Uh, you're going to have to uh, maybe record that for us sometime or something. I can make that happen for you. I can. Make it. <laughs> it can get a little intense. Checking on Clemson football with Mark Gordon from Shaking the Southland. Of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel right here at Mark Rogers TV as we cover all the big games and the big topics in college football. The lifeblood of any program is recruiting, and that's what has put uh, Clemson amongst the elite of college football. And talking about elite, uh, we possibly have some news regarding an elite athlete at the high school ranks that's right up there in the top 15 or so, regardless of position. Uh, yeah, K.J. Henry out of South Carolina has recently came out and listed his top five schools. Clemson, as expected, is in that top five. Uh, his top five has come down to Clemson, Alabama, Georgia, Virginia Tech, and South Carolina. Uh, right now, the Shrine Bowl is currently going on in Clemson, where North Carolina plays South Carolina, the best athletes from each state. Uh, I think it's one of the best high school 
uh, showcases in the country. If you get the chance, you're going to want to watch the Shrine Bowl. It's shown on the ESPN every year. Uh, great, great collection of kids. Uh, KJ Henry, if you look at that crystal ball right now, I I do consider him somewhat of a Clemson lean. Uh, the they worked hard on him. He's somebody that would fit the program very well. Um, and you and I were speaking of the the early signee period. I don't think KJ is not going to go as an early signee. Clemson is going to take another relatively low class. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be about eighteen tops, I, uh, give or take a couple of kids that decide to go to the NFL. Has eleven commits in their two thousand eighteen class, and seven of them are expected to sign with the Tigers during the early signing period, and that includes the number one and number two. Uh, depending on what ranking website you look at players in the country, and Trevor Lawrence and Xavier Thomas. Those two are expected to sign for the Tigers in the early signing period. But people currently definitely have their eyes on K.J. Henry and expect big things and are, are praying for orange on National Signing Day. Yeah, he is certainly uh, projected to be an elite uh, weak side defensive end, a 15th ranked player overall, number three at his position, number three in the state of North Carolina. Grades out to a 98, according to 247 Sports. So he is ultra talented out of Clemens, North Carolina. Mark Gordon from Shaking the Southland uh, doing a yeoman's job going offense, defense, special teams, and recruiting for us and breaking down the Clemson Tigers in preparation for, once again, that team from Alabama, the gold standard of college football. Maybe we'll be making a, a, a different comment concerning the gold standard of college football if the wind goes Clemson's direction again this year. Mark, we appreciate uh, the breakdown. It's uh, always a great discussion. Always a pleasure, Mark. Love the channel. Keep up the good work.